Hey guys, so in this video I wanted to talk about something I've been messing around with for the past few months maybe. Uh, it got quite a lot of attention on Instagram which sort of surprised me because I don't know if it's if it's really a good idea, if it's, go if it's going to lead anywhere because I mean for now it sort of works but there are quite a lot of technical obstacles to overcome to make this work perfectly and uh, what I'm talking about is this here. This is what I maybe half jokingly call the nano long range. This is a 3 inch platform which is designed to be powered by a single 18650 cell which you see on top here. So this is basically 3000 milliamp hour 1S. Um, I say half jokingly calling this um, nano long range because obviously long range is a bit of an overstatement for this thing. I mean yes it the current iteration does fly for something like 15 minutes. Um, it does have a 450 milliwatt VTX so, and crossfire, so you can get some decent range with it, but still, I mean, it's more mid-range maybe. If we're honest, you're gonna get like maybe two or three kilometers quite easily, but that's not really long range, but I don't know. For marketing purposes, yeah, let's it's, it's maybe call it nano long range because I have, to, I mean, I have the micro long range, the mini long range, so nano long range makes absolute sense. Um, but let's uh, take this thing on the bench and take a closer look at um, what it really is and, and what sort of the current iteration looks like and what the technical challenges are that I still have because um, I'm, I'm really sort of interested to get a bit of feedback from you guys in the comments, what you think, which direction this could take and what to do technically um, to improve on it. All right, so the basic idea of the Nano Long Range is quite simply to use a 1S platform. This is a um, pretty standard 1S toothpick, both for 2.5 motors, 11,500 kV, uh, a all really all in one board with RX, VTX um, and everything. So super light and to power this by uh, using an 18650 lithium ion cell, which have, if it's a VTC6, um, like 3000 milliamp hours. Now, obviously this is far from being a new idea and I'm not the first to try it as many people have done this before, um, but I gave it a go. Uh, first thing I did was test on, on one of the cells and the toothpick here. And surprisingly, I mean, it still flew absolutely fine. So, I mean, this is a 45 gram battery roughly. Um, and this quad here is, I think, 20-something grams. I mean, I don't even remember, to be honest. Let's find out. Ah, oh, it's 36 grams. It's a bit heavier than I remembered. So 36 grams for the quad. And then we have um, a 48-gram battery. So surprisingly, this still sort of worked fine. Uh, I still flew until basically... Uh, the VTX and FC are starting to shut down. So there's an obvious issue, which is you need to push those down to something like 2.5 volts to get the full 3000 milliamp hour capacity out of those cells. And at such a low voltage, uh, the electronics on this toothpick just start to shut down. So this means um, we need to come up with different electronics or a different way to wire the electronics that it can deal with such a low voltage. Um, which also means, I mean, I would want to have more space um, than I have on such a toothpick. Obviously, if this thing is made for cruising, going in longer ranges, I mean, one of these SPI receivers isn't going to cut it. This thing has maybe like 50 meters, <laughs> 50 meters range. Um, so really, really poor range, 25 milliwatt VTX. So you're not going to get very far. Um, plus, I mean, obviously the idea was to use a step up in some way to keep the voltage more stable, even when the, the battery was going um, towards 2.5 volts. So I just needed more space in this frame. So I thought, yeah, I mean, maybe going for a classic toothpick style frame isn't going to cut it. There's just not enough space. So what I came up with basically is this frame here. So this is sort of the really first um, shot I gave it. Let me quickly remove the battery. So this is, you can see it more clearly. So this is basically a, a tiny version of the uh, micro long range. So a dead cat, which also I found 
um, to be quite important if this is supposed to be a uh, you know cruiser with which you enjoy flying you don't want to have too much props in view to make it immersive um, and there is quite a lot of space in this frame here, much more than in, in such a toothpick. So, uh, obviously I now had enough space in the frame. I mean, I, I went through a few trials to make this thing light enough because that's a bit of a problem. Um, but maybe let's talk about weight um, later. Let's, let's first go into um, the electronics aspect and making this thing work um, going below, let's say, 3 volts. And here, um, I mean, I'm just going to spill the beans now because honestly, the solution I found isn't really something super smart or <laughs> crazy or far-fetched. So all I'm doing is running the VTX of a um, of a separate 5-volt um, step-up, basically. Um, Cam and Crossfire are running off the 5-volt circuit on the board and the VTX is running off a separate 5-volt um, separate circuit. So um, this means, I mean... Actually, the flight controller and these steps ups, if you keep the, the amp draw very low, they can sustain 5 volts um, with an input voltage that is lower than, than what they are supposed to be able to handle if you read the specs. So if it's a very low amp draw, you can really get away with um, up to, I mean, I pushed this thing up to 2.1 volts when the VTX was on 25 milliwatts. Um, and it worked uh, without an issue. Nothing is shutting down. So with VDX on higher power levels, it starts to shut down at 2.3 volts, which is, I mean, lower than you would want to push these batteries. Usually you're going to stop at maybe 2.5. So this is absolutely fine. Uh, one of the issues I still have to solve here with the electronics, I mean, obviously the USB isn't accessible in this iteration, which I'm probably going to solve with this HGLRC board here. This is the all new 5 amp 1S board, the Zeus 5 amp, which they released. And this one's got Bluetooth. So this will solve all the accessibility issues and make things much easier. Also, this um, does look like a way higher quality board than the... Um, What's that <laughs> JHEMCU I have in here? So, but you're gonna want to use a 1S capable board, 5 amps. ESCs is gonna do it easy. Uh, but one of the issues I have, I mean, uh, this, this, all of this seems to introduce a lot of noise in the system. So I have quite a lot of noise in my FPV feed, and um, I, I tried to run this with a GPS, but everything is just too noisy for the GPS to, to properly work at the moment. They're quite sensitive also to electrical noise, um, which which is one of the problems I'm trying to solve. Um, I did get away with not using a capacitor, but I'm gonna put it back on because obviously that made the whole noise issue much, much worse. So uh, I think capacitor plates might be one of the, um, the idea is to, to solve all the, the noise issue also, uh, trying to avoid ground loops and so on. So I'll have to put in some work to make this um, make this actually work without being super noisy and having a very noisy FPV feed. Speaking of uh, the other parts of the electronics, now again, the, the drivetrain here is really standard one as two figures. Nothing special about these motors here. Um, one thing that is posing challenges is the GPS. So... That's a sort of standard GPS here, BN180, this is one from Ishin. I mean, they're all pretty much the same and they're all quite heavy. Now, obviously, I mean, they do have a little steel cage here. The steel cage weights roughly a gram. And um, the biggest issue here is this uh, ceramic antenna here, which weighs three grams. So the overall weight of such a GPS is um, really is a problem. So... We have uh, five grams here for the GPS plus wires. So we're talking about six grams. Now six grams doesn't sound like a lot, but this thing here is 49 grams. So adding five grams is 10% of, um, of increasing the dry weight by 10%, which is quite a lot. And I really had to fight to make this thing light enough. So honestly, I'm not sure if I will keep the GPS in. I tried to actually try to make a GPS lighter. So this is a BN180 I completely stripped. Let me zoom in on this thing here. So I sort of ruined it. I ripped off the, the metal cage and desoldered the antenna. Uh, and what I put back on there is a double a single, a copper, that's basically copper tape. So it's a tape sticky side and the other side is 
um, a thin layer of copper. It's horribly difficult to solder, but it sort of worked. But honestly, um, this, this thing didn't catch any satellites anymore. So it seems I failed on this one. So I'm really not sure whether I'm going to keep the GPS. Another reason to, uh, at least in this first iteration, possibly ditch the GPS is that None of these one S flight controllers does have enough UARTs, so you have to sacrifice the um, VTX control and set your channels in power with the little button on the VTX, which is honestly just super annoying. Um, so possibly I, I'll have to ditch the GPS for now. So let's get back to uh, maybe the weight discussion. So 49 grams, which is roughly um, the goal I had. We just saw that um, my my regular one is toothpick that doesn't have a separate VTX crossfire and so on and so on. Um, isn't that much uh, heavier actually, uh, lighter actually. It's 36 grams, this one's 49. So I added something like 13 grams, which is absolutely accessible, um, acceptable with a... Uh, with an 18650, we're slightly under 100 grams of uh, of all-up weight. Now, obviously, I, I had to cut a ton of torn, uh, cut a ton of corners to make this work. I mean, this thing does have nylon screws, nylon standoffs, and so on. I still have steel screws on the props um, because I didn't have any nylon screws that had the right length. So I think I can save some weight here. Uh, I think I could use aluminum screws for mounting the motors and so on and so on. Um, the GNB27 here also saves a bit of weight. Um, quite a cool connector for this. So I think, I mean, maybe I could save two or three more grams, but then really uh, also the frame. I, this, is, this is basically, this is the first iteration. I'm already working on something new. This is why I'm showing this here because it's sort of old news. But um, honestly, I think I can save a few more grams, but not that much more. Uh, but honestly, and I think this, this is a good transition to talking about flight characteristics. This thing does fly better than you would expect. So um, apart from the fact that obviously, as I already said, the, the flight footage is quite noisy. This thing cruises faster than I expected. Um, I mean, of course, it really punch outs really do hardly anything. You're cruising at like uh, almost 40% throttle. When the pack gets empty, you really sort of get in trouble. I mean, below three or below 2.5 or three volts. You're, you're starting to hover it over 50% throttle, so this gets a bit difficult, but it still flies. You could still like between, you could use the, the capacity of the pack between three and 2.5 volts to sort of limp home slowly without any issues. Still hovers fine. It actually feels um, quite nice. I mean, it, it, it's quite in control and quite locked, which is, which is super surprising. So it's actually quite pleasant to cruise around with it and it doesn't cruise as, as slow as I expected, neither. Um, I mean, the, the footage you're seeing is actually recorded in really quite seriously heavy wind. So it's less, uh, it's actually less wind um, sensitive than I expected, which sort of maybe makes sense because the ratio of, uh, you know, weight to prop uh, area, so disc area, isn't that crazy. 100 grams for a three inch, it's actually not that light for a three inch that so handles wind actually quite well it's really not too bad although of course it doesn't have too much power to fight the wind to re you really get in crazy winds you're gonna get in trouble but overall the cruising ability of this i would say is is absolutely fine at um, slightly below 100 grams all up weight so what are the next steps on this now obviously i have to solve all the electronics issues here to make this thing um run without that much noise and more reliable and so on and also the gps topic is, is still open um one thing i really also thought about is i mean what i did here to make this 18650 work is basically just um so uh, weld a um this piece of metal to it and solder up a gnb27 here to put a bit of glue on there to protect it from uh, having a short circuit, but basically you have to build one of these batteries, which aren't really available in the market with such a connector. So not super cool. And what would be really great, uh, and I'd love to hear what you think about this, is using something like this. Now, this one is a, uh, this one is good enough, quite clearly. I really doubt that this one would work, but I found um, better, uh, better versions of this. I don't even know how these things are called, honestly. Um, 
but there are some with gold plated contacts here which is what i ordered which could work so this would be super nice if you just use a charged 18650 and there's like super cheap chargers for this you can charge with a micro usb quite cool it would just be super cool if you could pop a battery in your quad and that would just work and also these batteries are cheap they're like four um I mean, it depends where you buy them. They're between three, uh, three euro sixty and four euro something. Sometimes if you just buy a single one, it can cost up to ten euros. But overall, it's say maybe say like five, uh, five euros. So, uh, what is that? It's pretty exactly six uh, US dollars at the moment. So I think it would be super nice. I don't know what you guys think about this. If if we could just pop in one of these and be good to go and pop it out and pop another one in, it would make for super cheap batteries that last for something like 15 minutes flight time easy now obviously um i don't know i mean it it could lose a lot of efficiency because of these contacts here obviously this isn't great but i hope the gold plated ones might solve this and there is a bit of weight trouble here because these things aren't super light they're eight grams which is i mean that's a problem if i just put this on top of this quad um it's not going to work great, but I have a few ideas of what I could I could do to make this work. But let me know what you think about this. I mean, obviously, this is something where um, and I'm wondering, is this maybe a solution that is looking for a problem or is there really an interest in having such a class of quad? So I would say the, the upsides of this, um, to conclude a bit of on my testing, is it does cruise quite nicely. It's really cheap. The batteries are super cheap and... It's really one of the quietest quads I ever heard. I mean, you basically, um, you can hear it for maybe like 20 to 30 meters distance. So uh, what's it? Let's maybe say 100 feet. Um, 100 feet, maybe 60 to 100 feet is, is the distance. You can barely, barely hear it uh, farther away than that. It's, it's impossible to hear it. This thing is super, super, super stealthy. Um, also, I think with the new EU rules, I didn't look into this into a great amount of detail, but maybe this is something that could actually pass as a toy. Um, not not like it is here now, but maybe a 1S18650 powered platform in general is something that could be constructed in a way that um, could be certified as a toy and therefore fly under all of the uh, regulations we have, at least in the EU. That's something I will look into that could be quite interesting because obviously, I mean, this thing is super harmless. It's super light. It's it's quite uh, quite slow. So you could basically fly this straight into your face without hurting yourself. So these things could be very cheap, which is um, something I think that could be interesting about it. Not Obviously, downsides, it's, it's, this platform is seriously underpowered, especially if you're going um, below 3 volts, but it's it's still enough for cruising. So um, it would be very interesting for me to know what you think. So leave a comment below what you think about this. Is this something that I should pursue or that should be pursued? Is there any interest in, in pushing this? Because obviously, this is never going to be... or. No not too sure about this because i don't know what dji will come up with but in the near future this is not going to be capable of carrying dji hd so we're always going to be stuck with analog so is there any uh any use such as a small analog cruiser um, but for now i'll keep developing this i have new stuff um to test for this so i have the new hglrc 1102 come on get this in focus please let me zoom in so uh, I have the new HGLRC 1102.5s, 11,000 kV. These are really nicely made. Um, this is something I'm going to test. I have uh, the HGLRC 1S board here. So different electronics that HGLRC gave me to test on this platform. Um, so obviously, I mean, the elephant is in the room is, will this maybe make it uh, to be a Reckon product? Honestly, I don't know if, if I'm ever going to release this as a commercial product. It will. This will really take quite a while to, to be uh, perfect and really work fine until you can actually, um, actually uh, you know, make a commercial product out of this. It needs to have a decent level of reliability and performance. All right, guys. Um, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, and again, let me know what you think. Is this something really useful that will have an application in the future or... Uh, you know, isn't there much use in something that is 
uh, a lot, a lot below 250 grams and, and just using 1S. All right, guys, thanks for watching.